Yeah, sure. go ahead and get started. I'll shoot. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. We've got some people on that haven't we haven't seen in a minute, so I want to go through um, these beginning slides a little bit. Um, let's see. If it's on. Yep. There we go. So we've got our agenda that we've been using. It's been working out pretty good. I feel like we've had some great conversations. We've been able to fit everything in. Um, today, we're going to have some different people sharing. Um, so James is going to do the opening thoughts. And then we're going to have Donnie that's going to be our expert today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's good. And then um, Kim is going to share the parting thoughts. And um, so... First off, what we like to start off with is just what is Team Limitless? Um, we're united, we have abundance, integrity, growth, creativity, altruism. And then we've come up with a few other things together, collaboration, family, comfort, support, responsiveness, attention. And so each time we just like to talk a little bit about that and how what we view as a group, what we view Team Limitless as. So if anybody has anything to add, um, that just comes to your mind about what Team Limitless is, um, you can pitch in. I love the collaboration word. I, I love how we can all jump in and help each other at different times. I, I love that I've got people to call on when challenges arise. Love that. It's one of my favorite too. So this can also be what you feel like it is, like Kitty just mentioned. Um, I, I feel there is a good, a very high level of collaboration here and accessibility to each other, um, but also maybe what we want it to be. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Just some words that come to mind, just kind of like what we, you know, when I when I think of maybe not Team Limitless, but like the Reigns team and what maybe, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, you know, not that you guys don't have it, but if it's in there, I think it would be, you know, it's really good as a, like production or, you know, producing um, accountability, uh, discipline, you know, that kind of stuff. Love that. I know you guys focus a lot on meat, that. The meat and bones, the meat and bones, and then yeah. the meat and bones. maybe a little potatoes. I like that a lot. Yeah, that was um, something that came to mind um, with me too, is that um, is, is the culture and collaboration, but also, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get away from the, the words of discipline and grind. However, um, that's what this industry takes sometimes, especially when things get, um, they change. You, you need to be disciplined and you need to do what others aren't doing. And so I think as a group, if we collaborate, and, and that's what I love about these team meetings is we get to do that and we get to talk and um, help each other out because not everybody's always in that mentality of, of discipline and, and grinding it out, right? Um, and so, yeah, that's that was my thoughts. I really like accountability too. That was a really great one to bring up because I think that's something that we've been doing with these calls too, is just holding each other accountable for following through on the things that we say we're gonna do each week. And then kind of same thing, we've got better agent experience. And this is what um, it means to Jeff and I, but then we've got um, some question marks there because we've added a few things in. So we create better agent experience for our clients by providing service above and beyond their expectations for other agents through trainings and social networking events. We will attract other agents that are looking for a better agent experience. Uh, our communities by supporting local individuals, businesses, and charities. We are more than just realtors and ourselves with the opportunities at Team Limitless and EXP Realty. And a few things we've come up with together are that we provide a better agent experience for each other and then also for the industry. And this is what we strive for every day. Jeff and I are always talking about the better agent experience. We say there should be a little bell that goes off each time we say ding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just something to be top of mind. If anybody else has anything else that they'd like to add in here, I'll take notes and add it in next time. Um, does anybody have anything? All right. Pretty good list. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, <laughs> I need to cover everybody. Yeah. 
No, I think it's great. So now we're going to move on um, to our opening thoughts, and James is going to take it away from here. And James, you've got 10 minutes. Oh, man. Okay, let me make a note. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I have 10 minutes of stuff, but we'll we'll see what you happens. Have to take the whole thing. So uh, last time we had a quote, and I'll just repeat that. This is from the book, The Law of Attraction by William Walker Atkinson. And the quote was, that's a particular thing about the law of attraction. It believes what you say. It takes you serious or takes you seriously. And so uh, I, sh I read a couple paragraphs where this lady, um, she'd kind of done the work to get a certain reward, but she wasn't quite certain whether she deserved it or not yet. And then a couple pages later, I really like this part. It says... Uh, you are telling the truth in either statement, like whether you deserve something or whether you don't. It says you are telling the truth in either statement or both. At any rate, no matter for what you ask, you are merely demanding your own. And the more serious you are about demanding it, the more confident you are at receiving it. The more you will use it in reaching out for it, the surer you will be to obtain it. And it was interesting I, so i guess the challenge was to repeat the first little quote i said every day i didn't actually do that i did it a couple times but it really started to hit me i would say um i think friday or saturday we we were down in cedar city visiting some family and we're we we're just kind of relaxing and we're like well what what should we watch and i said well let's watch this little uh documentary on netflix it was called mcgregor forever so i don't whoever's Conor McGregor fans, but it was really interesting. We actually stopped watching it because I wanted to watch it all by myself. And so I've watched a couple episodes since then. And I want to share with you guys what I took from a couple episodes from that. And so in the couple episodes, it talked about what he had. Just It talks a little bit about his upbringing and before his very first fight, which resulted in a knockout. And I think he got like, top knockout of the night so we got extra like a extra sixty thousand dollar bonus but the week before that he was actually on um basically government assistance and so he was getting checks to help him out and so he was he was pretty excited about that but some of his thoughts are completely in line with what the book the law of attraction goes over and i'll just share a couple of those so the first one that i highlighted is uh, he said, this is what I dreamed into reality. And then he talks about he was just obsessed about becoming the best fighter. And to kind of go along with what I just read, he says, I'm here to take what's mine. And then as you go along, um, later on, he was preparing for a, a fight with uh, Donald Cerrone, and he was asked, did you have faith that you would be able to explode onto the scene as you had? And his response was, if I didn't, it wouldn't have happened. I had to believe in it. I had to feel it. I had to have faith in it for it to happen. And he, he hadn't fought for quite a while. I think he hadn't fought for about two years. And the question was posed to him, what happens if you lose? And he, Connor's response was, that is not an equation. That does not process in my brain for one second. And then he's, Asked another question by the reporter, is there, a, is there a safe that's in your brain that's locked and it just doesn't open? He says, I don't know. I'm not a neurologist. I just cannot see it. I cannot feel it. Um, and then he goes on to say, this is during COVID, he is waiting for a fight. He's trying to keep a positive mind frame and always be happy. If if you're true, if if you truly feel grateful for the things in your life, gratitude is one of the most strongest forms of power in attracting good things in your life and this is after he's had a ton of success he says i still remain grateful and more comes so i think those are some pretty powerful statements that are a, li a little bit more recent in my mind compared to some of the others that we've seen but the thing that really hits me about this is that the same principles are repeated over and over and over and over again in every successful person that I've that I've looked into as far as visualization or visualization, gratitude, and just having a positive mindset. 
and the positive mindset is not like a black and white um, sort of thing. It's something you have to work for because Connor did mention uh, when you experience some losses, there were down times, but he always had to bounce back. And so that's kind of my little spiel about that. But for those of you who were on the call, okay, I like five more minutes. <laughs> so those of you who were on the call last week, I want to hear some of what was your experience as far as the the positive thoughts and about the law of attraction where it says, if you it believes what you say, it takes you serious. And then also when, when you're reflecting back on the week, I would just say, don't be judgmental on yourself. Just kind of state it as a fact and then be curious about those specific things. And so who wants to share first? I'll go first. So um, for me, um, I've been trying to make sure that I'm uh, getting my spiritual thought for the day in the morning and at night before I go to bed. So it's the first thing I think of and the last thing that I think of. But throughout the rest of the day, um, my mind goes all over the place to other things that need to be done, um, work that needs to happen. Um, and um, sometimes I get into this, um, well, I don't feel good. And I know that that is something that can be it's, it's a state of mind. It's where I can say, okay, I can sit back and, and think about everything that's hurting me right now. And I've noticed that I do that a lot. It's like, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, does my stomach hurt? Yeah. My stomach hurts. Um, so it's like, <laughs> I, I, so I've been thinking about, okay, I've got to have a different thought process. Um, when I first wake up, I need to be maybe visualizing what my ideal day is or visualizing what my next house is going to look like. Or um, so I've noticed that those are things that pop in my mind. Oh, my neck hurts. Oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, this hurts. That hurts. So that's, that's me right now. That's where I'm at. I, things hurt. So, <laughs> so I have to, to change that thought process. Cause if I'm thinking about something else, whatever's hurting at that time, I don't even notice. I just get on with the day and it's fine. So, but it's changing that thought process of everything hurts to just, well, what am I going to do today? What's come next on the list? What am I excited about? What am I going to get done? Yeah, that's great awareness. Thanks for sharing. I've got one. Go ahead, Nathan. <clears throat> Um, so some of you may know this, some of you may not. I used to be pretty hardcore into Harley Davidson and ride a motorcycle. Um, nothing like going 90 miles an hour with the, the road six inches, seven inches below your feet and the wind in your face. <laughs> Sometimes you have bad thoughts to go through your head and uh, you have to control those and picture yourself getting home safely. I used to do that every time I left somewhere, pressure myself getting home safely, walking in the house. And that, that was, you know, I, it's kind of along the same lines. You just got to focus on the positive and make sure you're, you're thinking about good thoughts to get home. Yeah, that's it. I like that. I'll I'll pick on I, I oh, can go jump ahead. in and say that I, I've been studying this same thing for years and it absolutely is accurate that what, what you, I think the, the phrase is what you think about comes about. And so wherever you're focusing your thoughts is what you're bringing into your life. And there's, there's a whole lot of science behind that, but just that one phrase kind of sums it up of mm -hmm. wherever you're focusing your mind. That that's what ends up coming into your life. Yep. Thanks, Kitty. Well, I think my time is up, but the only thing I'll say is just even from the people that we have on here, there's a mountain of evidence that supports the law of attraction and positive thoughts. And so even if you think it's one of those foo-foo things, what's it going to hurt to try it out? So just start with an awareness. And then if you have to reach out, I would say 
most people on here would be willing to. I don't want to volunteer anybody, but just reach out to them, see what their experiences are, and find someone you relate with. And I'm sure they can share those things. And I mean, that's what why we're why we're a team. If you need to connect on the Wednesday meetings, but I appreciate this time to kind of share these things. I didn't know what direction it was going, but little did I know a little documentary on Netflix turned out to be pretty helpful for me. So cool. My time is up. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, James. And thanks to everybody else that contributed on that too. That's uh, something really that we need to be more conscious of and think of. And that's what it made me do is just think about it more consistently, mm -hmm. um, paying attention to my thoughts. I think I'm usually pretty good about uh, dismissing negative thoughts, but because of our discussion last week to this week, it really made it more prevalent throughout my days. So that's kind of cool. I, I agree. Um, I've been listening to a lot of things that have to do with exactly this. I think I listened to Tony Robbins. There was one um, podcast I listened to probably five times yesterday, just because what he was saying was resonating so hard with me. Um, anyway, I think keeping those positive things in your mind and then Tim on waking up first thing in the morning, what, what I've learned is first thing, smile. If you smile first thing in the morning, which you don't usually think of because you have all these different things in your mind going on, especially if you're in pain, but smiling actually can help shift you completely. That's an awesome tip. That was yeah, thank you. Something that Lane and I started doing a few months ago is smiling right when we wake up. And at first it was actually like, it actually hurt me to smile <laughs> in the morning. It was so <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> Built kind of pony. Yeah. Well, I had to force it at first, and now it's like genuine. Um. Okay. Moving on. That was awesome. Thank you so much for all the discussion and everything. That was so good. Um. Do we just like to do our recognition of our new agents? We've got um, Dalton, who's new in Idaho, and then celebrate all of our cappers. We've got quite a few on this call. And um, I know that Shantae is close, or she might already be. Have you capped already, Shantae? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while to show up in our back office, but I saw you were at like 95%. So I was like, she's probably already there. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations, guys. And now we'll move on to um, our buyer needs, new listings, and open house opportunities. If anybody has anything they want to throw out there. Kathy's got something. I had my closing this morning, eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> my okay. my relocation buyer that I've been working with since September. So, you know, the one you've been hearing me complain about, then it was all it's all good. It's all good. So it awesome. should be funded, should be recorded and funded today, they said. So congrats. <laughs> and my son, grandson rather won the semifinals football game and we are moving on to Seattle Husky Stadium, Washington State or uh, University of Washington Husky Stadium on Friday the 1st for the championship game. We are number two and we're playing the number one team. They've been 11 time champions. So wish us all luck, prayers, everything. My entire family, grandkids, friends and family are all going over there. We've already got rooms booked for Friday. At the Husky Stadium, we play at three o'clock on Saturday, on Friday, Friday, Friday afternoon. So it was all it was a nail bite of a game on Saturday. It was like one point uh, difference in overtime. So yeah, so it was pretty cool. Awesome. And we're talking games. about football. I just have to mention that both Oregon and Washington beat the Utes this year, and we're moving on to the Pac-12 <laughs> championship game. Just had to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time in lakeside history this year my daughter was the first graduating class in 1993 this is 2023 and my grandson um this is my last uh, grandchild in high school he's a senior so this is a pretty pretty awesome for everybody but it was the first time in lakeside high school and that's at, out in nine mile falls just north of spokane First time in 30 year history to ever get to the championship. That's awesome, Kathy. So excited. Yeah. Awesome. Does anybody <laughs> have any? Um... Kitty had her hand up. Okay, Kitty's got her hand up. Any buyer needs, new listings, open house opportunities? I don't have a buyer need, and my listing isn't new, but I am looking for feedback on my listing. It's been up for 
um, almost a month and not getting nearly enough showings. And so I, I would love feedback from anyone who has a moment to look it up, but let me know if you've got any thoughts on how I've got it listed and or it would be fantastic if anybody else has a, a listing that they would like feedback on, if we could set up maybe a local uh, tour where we all pop around to each other's listings and give some of the feedback these sellers are looking for in a slower market. What's the address or MLS number on that one, Kitty? MLS number is, oh, I just had it up a moment ago. Um, you can pull it up. MLS number is 1964296. I'll take a look at it for you. I told her there'd be a few people on here that would uh, be willing to do that. What we would like to do is um, at least pull up the listings, listing, take a look at it, see why um, people may not be wanting to look at it. Is it priced wrong? Um, is there something that um, is going on with the listing that might make it so that people aren't wanting to go? Those are kind of the things that she and I were talking about um, because Oftentimes when we have listings and we feel like we've priced them right, we wonder, okay, did we make an error somehow? Why aren't people going to look at it? So um, even walking through the house um, is a good idea, Kitty, but you're not even getting people to do that. So it's the online presentation. I think that would be really great to look at and compare and see what else is available. Yeah, I'm actually wondering if I did too much on the MLS because I've got the floor plan and the Matterport up there. Are people being able to, to tour the home themselves that way and narrow it down and so we're not getting as many showings? I don't, I don't know. But I would love feedback on that. And I'm happy to give feedback to anyone else who's looking for, trying to figure out why their listing isn't moving as fast. Hey, I'm curious. Um, I'm clearly not in your market. But um, how many broker opens um, are you all doing in your market? Are you seeing many of those? No, I, I used to see a lot of them, but. Yeah, I find it interesting since our market has shifted, mm -hmm. you know, when we are hot and busy, we really didn't need to do broker opens depending on the property because they were flying off the shelf so fast, right? Well, they're not going so fast anymore <laughs> for the most part. So we feel like that's something that would be helpful to get back in the in the habit of. I agree. Maybe some fun, some, you know, some appetizers, some drinks, some cookies, some giveaways, you know, all the good things that incentivize realtors or mm -hmm. like a CE class at your listing. Ooh, that's a fun idea. So I don't know much about the international program through EXP, but I would ask if you posted it on, I guess it automatically does it through the MLS though, huh? Yeah. So never mind. It automatically does it. Great idea. Kitty, I'm looking at the price point on that listing too. Um, have you looked into the luxury certification EXP? I have not because I don't tend to list in, in that realm, but I certainly could. Yeah, because of the price point, because it's over a million, right? Um, you would be able to list it. It's not necessarily restricted just to a million because um, different mm -hmm. areas have yeah, different price points for your, luxury. Yeah. yeah, you can put all your listings if you're luxury certified. And Lynn, have you had um, success at that? I was just going to say that it's nice to be able to show your seller wh who is looking at their property and where it is being advertised. Is it worth the $2,500 a year you pay? So far, I haven't seen any leads come from that. I can see how many views I can show my, um, my high-end sellers where I'm advertising their properties. They love seeing that. The luxury packages they have for us are absolutely amazing. But have I seen the return on investment so far? I have not um, because I haven't gotten, you know, any leads that way. Um, but I can see how many people are viewing it and where it's being advertised. And you never know with these higher end houses. Okay. 
I know I, I get some of that through list track, but you're saying that there's more info available through the luxury certification? So through the luxury certification, um, you, you get to advertise your property globally on um, a bunch of different luxury sites. So if you're doing a lot of luxury, I think that that would be a good investment for you doing one. Um, I hesitate to say, oh yeah, go go throw $2,500 on it, right? Yeah. In, a, in a market like this. Um, it's nice to know about though, because yes. I've had a lot of luxury people reach out to me um, the last six months because they are seeing that EFC is becoming more luxury oriented. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, you well, can doubt anytime come see you know what I have. Okay. A couple things I do, Kitty, is they 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 publish the luxury listings in a lot of the national high end luxury uh, magazines. You know, it's all online now. But like Barrons, Wall Street Journal, there's a whole list of them that, that your listings will show up in. But they also syndicate um, your listing to 80 different countries. So it's it, it's the reach is super expanded. Um, okay. We only need one buyer, right? So exactly. one thing that has come to my mind that I think I'll look into is I'm curious now if you weren't a luxury agent, but you co-listed with somebody that was a luxury agent, if the your or if you got a co-list to come onto your listing that was a luxury agent, if that listing could then be syndicated to all those services. So I'll, I'm going to look into that. That's yeah, that could definitely work because we can do 10 on that site. And right now I think I have like six or seven. Yeah. Okay. Kitty, have you ever looked into box brownie? Um, yes, once I had a, a vacant listing that I staged through box brownie. Yeah, I was going to say, because if maybe you change just the first photo and you know how they do the different skyline. And then in a couple of the kitchen photos, I noticed there was a lot of stuff on the fridge and a lot of stuff on the counters. They do item removal. Okay. So you can take a couple of those pictures and take a couple of those off. But as far as days on market, if you're only if you've only been up for 30 days, that price range in Lehigh is taking about three months to sell right now, it looks yeah. like. So you're still under days on market for your price range. I agree. And the the stuff on the fridge cracks me up. I told them that multiple times. When the photographer showed up, they hadn't removed it yet. And then the Matterport guy showed up after and he brought it up. And they still it's removed in the Matterport, but on in the photos. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> they did 90% of what I told them to do. And that one cracks me up that they didn't do that one. But whatever. People are funny. Yeah. But I like the idea of box brownie. I hadn't thought of it for removing yeah. that in, in the photos. It's super cheap too. It's really yeah. expensive. Oh, that's box brand. A beautiful house. Yeah, Jen actually did that on our last listing out here in Twilla. And, you know, for me, the way my brain works, I don't notice stuff like that. But Jen's like, we have to do this. We have to change this cover photo to grab the attention. It's not going to look right. And she did that and paid like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks or whatever you did. But the buyer that we got paid 30,000 over list and their comment right away was they had to see it because that picture just grabbed them. Mm -hmm. and, awesome. and I, you know, it might not be like that on every listing, but I, I know it caught me by surprise because I'm like, oh shit, Jen, it worked. <laughs> they cared. So you just made it the, the really pretty sunrise or sunset skyline? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can do it on Canva, but they'll they'll edit everything. They'll edit like the sidewalk, they'll do the grass, whatever you need. Okay. It's four dollars per photo for that. Yeah. I can't the item removing items, I think, is less, so it's not bad at all. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it for uh, mm -hmm. photos that were already staged. Maybe. <laughs> Love it. That's good collaboration. That's awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Move on to our wins and challenges. We've kind of, I guess we're kind of already talking about that a little bit. We've thrown in some wins and challenges, but if anybody else has anything, we've got a few more minutes here before we move on. I'm looking for Crawfee, Twilla, Rush Down, Rush Valley, yeah. uh, a house in Spanish Fork for sale by owner. 
got bad, kind of bad credit, but he's a dentist. He put money down. Nice. And then, uh, you know, hope I got it. Hopefully, I get a buyer on the lot that I got real estate. So, the lot you're looking for, five acres. Yeah. And Twilla. Twilla Rush. He's got a dam for an excavation equipment on it. So, okay. Industrial type property. Yeah. Commercial. He would like zone to have on it, but he's kind of just saying, well, we got to just get the industrial property and put it on there. So okay. I'm going to focus on that today. Nice and tall. For commercial, have you checked on LoopNet? Yeah, I have checked on LoopNet. There's nothing. Okay. Well, there was nothing a week and a half ago. The commercial agents, if all they do is commercial, they don't list on the MLS, but they list on LoopNet. That is their MLS. I'll reach out to Bill Nieves. Mm, that's good. Yeah, he really wants to put a house on it. He would put his equipment on it. I mean, he had, I had the, my lot under contract and he put his equipment on it for that. Mm. So he wants to build a house with his business. Gotcha. So I don't know if commercial is going to work. There's got to be some like agricultural subdivided. There's some out there, but. That makes use a little tougher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figure it out though, actually. Anyone else before we move on? Ready. Mm -hmm. I'm a little quicker. Oh. Okay. So we didn't have a training last week because of Thanksgiving, um, but this week we've got Jeff Bitten coming in again. I'm um, talking about Pitch 59. He's going to teach us how to 10x our referrals. Um, this is a super great training to invite, you know, SOI and other agents to. And when I say SOI, I mean like other business owners, um, people who have their own business or looking to network with other people. This is just a great touch, even if they don't end up coming. It's great to invite him. Yeah, this is a great tool. He's going to be demoing how it works. And um, it gives you so many talking points with your SOI, with other agents, with your professionals that you work with. And, and an excuse to reach out to you, like Ashley said, your SOI that have businesses, because um, it, it really is a, effective when you share your contact information. And there's a 59 second video on there introducing yourself and what you do and it makes that personal connection. And I know for me personally, since I've started using, I've gotten, it, it's been shared dozens of times uh, from the people that I've, I've given it to. So the great training. I hope you guys can jump on zoom. If you can't be here in person, we're going to have a, a sponsor bring in lunch, but uh, great one to invite other agents to as well. And does everybody know where to find the registration link? I try to post it in the Facebook group, and then it also goes out on the texts. But that's what you would want to share with anybody that you're inviting is just the registration link. And it will actually, if they've got an iPhone, it will pop up with the little image and everything. Um, but yeah, if you guys ever have any trouble finding anything regarding like trainings or any information or recordings, just reach out to me and... I'll direct you in the right direction. Keep clicking. I don't know why it's not changing. <laughs> <laughs> My clicker's not working. Here's our upcoming trainings. Um, we want to remind everyone to invite to um, first week of December. We've got a overview coming up. And then here are our other upcoming trainings. We're going to take the 27th off for Christmas. <laughs> and then just a reminder keep putting stuff in the facebook group we've been getting a lot more engagement in there that's really awesome um so thanks for everyone who's been contributing in there and now my clicker's working um then we're gonna move on to donnie with the expert tips hey. and strategies <laughs> Be a little bit of Donnie and Jen, so because she perfect this together, so I like to get her and put on some stuff. I think it'd be beneficial for you guys. By the so. way, if I may say something real quick, it was nice to meet you, you Donnie and Jen yes. at uh, at Bill Pipes. Uh, what was it? 
sales power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> last yeah. month. So it's great to meet you guys. And yeah, awesome you. Always great and, to and see you. you've already heard a lot of this stuff. So we just implement pretty much all Bill talks about and all those top producers. Yeah, I'm about. supposed to be I'm supposed to be in the Monday mayhem today, but I got a little backtrack with the, the closing and all. So I'm going to catch up on it. Yeah, so. you got the whole rest of the day. You got the rest of the half of the day. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Plenty of time. So, uh, do you yeah. want me to start talking, you guys, or what? Yeah, you're up, Donnie. Okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, so I actually reached out to Jeff and Lynn just because I've been, we made a lot of changes in our business, uh, changes, but also doing the same thing. And, and, and it's finally got me more excited, um, uh, you know, about doing business again. So, you know, we've been, we've been doing good, having some successes. And I thought, you know, let's share it with you guys because um, I don't know how much you guys, because I don't, you know, come to a lot of the team limitless trainings and whatnot, not because I don't like you guys, but we're, we're pretty busy kind of doing our own thing. But I, you know, I wanted to talk about the thing that I think is the, uh, absolutely beyond and foremost, the most important thing in, in our business, really any business, right? Because it's, you know, you, it's what you're doing to get business that matters. All the other stuff is, you know, I don't want to call it fluff. It helps make you better. But if you're not doing the, the, the daily actions and tracking your metrics, then how do you have any idea what your business is? Um, so I've become like a really big, uh, you know, big into like tracking your business, tracking your numbers, because um, I really don't like because I'm not a big business person. I got into this, you know, very blue collar, didn't know really what I was doing. Um, and I have to see what I'm doing and I have to be able to understand, like, like, for example, um, and I don't know if you guys spend a lot of money on on your business, but there was points in our business through the years with running a, a team spending eighteen thousand dollars a month. Right. So. If you're going to spend eighteen thousand dollars a month, you better know exactly what that ROI is, where that money's going, and how it's producing, and 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 if it's making you money or if it's not making you money. Um, and again, and that's one of those things that it's hard to kind of figure out um, how to track. That's another thing. So I found this program back in two thousand eighteen. I'm actually one of their first clients on it um, because I was looking for a web based system that I could go in and track my business on and make it simple. Because if it's not simple. My brain can't process it. Maybe you guys can relate to me, but if it's not easy for me to do this, then it's going to be very, very hard to do it. And on top of that, it's hard to get people to do things in general. So for running a team and and, and helping our agents be better and them to understand their business, um, you know, it's got to be simple for them to do too. So if you understand, you know, uh, how to track in the system, which we'll go over a few things, it literally takes like 30 seconds a day, 30 seconds to a minute a day to put your numbers in, and then it's going to calculate out all of uh, your numbers. So, um, so we've been running our, 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 um, our team. Um, we're very high into, to, um, prospecting, um, cause I believe that if you're not talking to people every single day, if you're not communicating with people, having conversations, then you're never going to set appointments. You're never going to meet appointments. You're never going to get anybody under contract and you're never going to close any deals. And so when I talk to agents, cause I've been coaching, um, I mean, we've been coaching agents since 2015 running a team and it's, it's the most bizarre industry to me because nobody tracks their business. So if I talk to people and I say, how articulate, cause I, I do want to know, articulate to me how you get business, how you're successful or how, or, or, you know, the flip side is if they can't articulate it to it's how they're not successful, but most people can't articulate in this industry to me how and why they're successful based off the daily things that they do. And so I think we get caught up in kind of, you know, I think like, uh, you know, like, like this business can be like super stressful and anxious. I think a lot of that reason is because people avoid the meat and potatoes, which I call it right. Calling people and having conversations, people avoid that and go on to other things because it makes them feel like they're doing, you know, things in real estate, but kind of avoiding this thing. And that's where a lot of the anxiety um, and the, and the stress and like, like the, 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 the lack of belief will come in, in your business. So if you can attach to doing the daily activities that must be done and then doing everything else secondary um, and tracking it so you can see it. And by the way, Jeff, can I share my screen? Yes, you should be able to. I got it open. Yeah, so it makes sense. So you don't just see a blank screen. Yeah. While you're pulling that up, there's a book called uh, Fake Work Versus Real Work. And the first time I read it, I was like, fake work, work is work, right? But yeah. what, what in this industry, there's a lot of stuff that you can do that makes you feel like you're doing something productive. But mm -hmm. if you ask yourself the question, is this getting me closer to my next contract? Um, if that's not, then what you're doing is fake work. It's just busy work. It's not the real work that's going to get you closer to the money. Yes. 
Well, I, I love that. Fake, so fake work versus real work. That's the book. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. I got to read that. That's, that's right up my alley. I love that. Um, yeah. Cause again, there's so much in this business that we can make you feel like you're doing stuff, but, and again, so, so this, this is like the meat and potatoes right here. So like when we bring an agent onto the team, including ourselves, and, and let me back up real quick. Cause I know I only have like 10, 15 minutes. So I'm rambling. I don't really know where to start and end with this. Cause I didn't have a lot of time, but the, the reason I'm so excited is because we, we've been running a big team all that stuff, had a lot of great years, had a lot of success. Through the last two years, it's been a little bit of a shift for us. And it really is hard to get agents to work, right? And I'm saying that just bluntly, but I say it you know, kindly as well, because I think more agents need to know it's hard to get people to do the work. So we've had to make a lot of adjustments. So when we bring an agent onto the team, it's very simple. We just tell them on top of all the training and coaching we're going to give you, you have to, your must-haves is you have to, because we're going to supply leads. You got your SOI. I don't, in, in, you know, I don't really care where you get your conversations, but the requirement is you have to get conversations. And so here's the metrics that you guys need to be following. Drop that. If you guys want to really understand what's going on in your business is right here. This is, this should be what you guys are looking at every single day, following and tracking. So you guys really understand what that looks like. And I got it year to date. Uh, uh, right now, um, but you could change it to any time frame that you guys want. Like we, when I coach agents on it, um, we're coaching uh, month to month and then week by week because we meet every Friday uh, to you know to check on the activities that are happening. Um, but essentially, you know, we our goal is let me, let me change it to a month so it's not as intimidating. Okay, so our goals are the bottom line right here. Okay, so when we, if you can go in, this system can literally do, um, and I think we're talking about doing a class on this so I can show you like what it can do. It literally does everything that you can imagine in your business, but you could go, go into your goal calculator and set your goals and make it whatever you want. But this is what our goals are, are for our team. So, and it's always the bottom line and the top line is going to let you know where you're at in relation to your goal. And then the color coordinate, you know, the color is going to show you if you're on track blue, you're dead, right? You're not hitting your goal, um, yellow and then orange, you know, you're, you're on your way to, uh, you know, to your closing. So we have a goal of 400 conversations a month, which breaks down to 20 conversations a day, right? So if you're getting 20 conversations a day, Monday through Friday, you're definitely going to hit your four, your 400, um, uh, buyer's appointment set four, right? Um, and here's the thing, you guys. You're not going to meet every buyer appointment you set. It's good to know what your uh, what that looks like, right? So, for example, buyer's appointment set to met, we're at sixty six percent, right? So again, this is going to give you an idea all the way down through appointments met, buyers signed under contracts, buyers closed, bottom line is listings. This is going to let you know exactly what your business looks like. Take the emotion out of it because here's the thing: if you're like, oh, I'm not getting business, and I'm, nothing's happening, right? Which we all we've all been there, right? We can just take accountability and take everything else away and go, well, I didn't make any conversations today. So if I'm not talking to anybody, then how do I get to that next part where I'm meeting them on appointments and so on and so forth? So it really lets you take accountability to, for yourself and really understand what your business is. And the conversations can come from anywhere. I really, it really doesn't matter, right? We do internet leads. Uh, you can do uh, Facebook messaging. Anywhere that you get a conversation, you need to be tracking it because how do you know how many conversations you need to have in order to set an appointment, right? Like, and again, it, you know, this is month by month and it builds out. I'm just uh, here on October, but the work that we did here got us closings, you know, for next month. So if I go to November, all the activities that come here are going to start to come out through here through the buyer's closed, but it all starts here. And so I'm pretty fortunate. And so what's got me excited is um, we've decided because we've been almost a hundred percent uh, coaching the team and, and, and having them produce for us. And it's been nice, right? We were able to go out of production doing 30 to 40 homes a year um, on our own with the team to back it out. And, and, you know, a lot of the years we do seven to 10 recently, right? Just because we've been doing, putting so much time into it. Well, when it became a little bit harder and we can't get everybody to do the required work, Jen and I made a big decision that we're going to start doing the, doing this ourselves and take it onto ourselves. And once we did that, a lot of things happened for me personally, not just the money side, because the money's coming in, but once we started taking action together and focusing more on controlling our business, I felt better about it. Started meeting more people, started closing more deals. Uh, Cause when we started uh, really hardcore tracking between me and Jen in July, 
we put four under contract in August and, and closed them out, you know, in September. And we have a pipeline for next month, uh, you know, and so on and so forth because we're, we're taking the action. So it's the thing I love the most about this business is it's simple. And if you didn't know it was simple, it's because you're talking to people that make it really, really hard, which is what we dealt with when we go out in the industry is a lot of people avoid this. And so they're like, well, let me make it really, really hard for you, which I think is very unfair to a lot of people in our business. And it's why a lot of people fell because this doesn't get talked about right here. And so again, track it, understand it. And if you're not getting deals, you can tell, you can know, okay, well, if I just step up my conversations, then I know exactly you know, how many appointments I can set and so on. And our team does this all the time. When they step their numbers up, they start setting appointments. When they're not doing anything, they don't set appointments, right? And so it's a really good way too for yourself to self-discover through your actions and your activity, like what you know, what what your activities are going to produce. If you're doing nothing, it's going to produce nothing. If you're doing something, it's going to produce something. And then obviously, the more better you get at skill sets, um, you know, your mindset and everything, it's going to produce better results. But even if you take action at the minimum level, action will always produce a result. And so, you know, again, focus on the actions. Um, and so that's it. So right there, I, that's what's got me excited. Track your numbers. It's the only thing that needs to be talked about. And then as far as like the rest of the system. I love visualization. Like you got, you talked about the law of attraction, which I absolutely love. I've been using it since I've known about it and I've used it for better or worse. Cause again, where your mind goes for good or worse, you're going to get that result. Right. So it's important to pay attention to, um, you know, where, where your mind's going, but this is also going to tell you what your business is. Um, and so like, if I pull up my team, it's been a slower year, but I'm super proud of us anyway, but it'll show that we've closed 12 million, 31 units, uh, got a few under contract that were, you know, in the uh, under contract volume, uh, 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 you know, everything all the way down to the income. It'll tell you your average price, average list price, buyer price, your average commission. Um, it gives you literally every detail of your business that you want to put in here. The other thing I like too is, and I, I pulled up this screen is if you want to put in your, uh, if you lead generate or if you, you know, whether it costs money or not, you want to know if it's worth it, if it's making money. So with us doing a lot of like internet leads, um, you know, we do a lot of, uh, where the hell did it go? Oh, that's why we do a lot of internet leads. So if you look right here, it's, it'll talk about, you know, the, in, the, uh, the lead type, Facebook property boost, you know, and, and so on, but then it's going to tell you your closed volume for that lead source, close GCI. Um, and with me being a team, because we split commissions, it'll give you all that and it'll break it all. And we got to update. We're in the middle of doing that right now. Um, but it'll tell you exactly what your cost per lead is, cost per closing, what your conversion rate is, your expenses and everything. It really just goes through. And, and, and I mean, if you can look on the left side here, this is just the reporting task right here. And this is all the reporting that can give you for your business. So it can do what you guys want. But my advice to you guys is this, if you're not tracking, I would highly advise you to track um, because visualization is one of the most important things in any business. And one of the things I've done through the years, and I used to love showing uh, people on my team, this is, is I like to pull up, um, like this is your uh, your income tab right here. So I like to pull up my income tab and then look at what my, I'm project I've made and look at what I'm projecting to make. And then I visualize what I want it to be. Obviously, you got to get out there and do the work, right? You can't just sit and stare at stuff and, and expect it to happen. There's always the work involved. Um, but, you know, visualization is big. But if you don't have anything to visualize, then you really have no idea, you know, what your business is in the first place. And one of the one of the quotes that I heard that I really, really like is, if you don't know your numbers, you're not making any money. And the most important thing is, which I really hope you guys attach to, is if you know your numbers, this is why I like it so much. If you know your numbers, it makes your business predictable. And if you make your business predictable, then you can wake up every day and get excited about getting to work, get excited about making phone calls because it's not daunting to know. It, it's more daunting, I should say, to know, to not know how many calls, you know, are going to get you to that trend, you know, to get you to your goal. But if you have an idea, well, I know if I hit this amount of conversations a day, blah, 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 what that looks like for my business, because everybody's numbers will be a little different. Take the anxiety, anxiety out of your business, take the unknown out of it take away pretty much everything because it's going to boost your confidence to a whole nother level um, and your business will start becoming predictable. And the other thing too is like, like when you look at big businesses, Walmart and all them, they spend money on advertising and, and uh, you know, they look at the same thing. They only do activities and spend money on things that work, right? So you want to know right now and always in your business what works or else why, why do it? Why keep doing the same thing that you're doing if it's not making money? It's going to let you know if it's working or if you need to pivot and get onto something that's going to work.
So that's kind of my, my spill on it. I, you know, again, full circle. I'm just excited. I, I'm enjoying real estate again. I'm not depending on, on, you know, I love running my team, but we're not dependent on that. Jen and I are back out in the field. We're meeting people. We're closing deals. Um, I didn't pull up last or next month's income, but these are all new leads. And we're going to make about $45,000 next month with everything closing. And that's, that's new leads procured from people coming onto our websites, calling them, creating a relationship and meeting them, right? And everybody's going to get business different. But if we didn't generate those leads, if we didn't call them, if we didn't nurture them, um, you know, if we didn't track what we were doing, then we wouldn't be doing, you know, is, is I don't want to say we're doing amazing, right? I don't want to like, you know, I just feel good. I feel like it's going to be all right. Next month's going to be great. And now it's on us uh, through December to keep making the calls, keep making the conversations. So that way January is awesome, right? It never ends. And that's why, like when I talk about discipline, it's one of those things. It's like, you, you got to be that every single day, whether we want to or not. And, and who does this affect if you don't have discipline to get the job done, right? I know some people have different financial situations, but you know, like Jen and I, if we don't get this shit done, like it affects everybody in our household, right? Because it's everything. This is a hundred percent of our income. And that's the way it is for a lot of people. And if that's the way it is in your life and, and you're not doing this, you know, again, think about who it affects and then jump on the phone and start making phone calls. You will feel better, you know, and you'll feel better when you see the actions, um, you know, build out on, on the thing. I know one of the most, the things that our agents get most depressed about when I meet them on Fridays is when they don't have numbers to talk about. They feel like shit, you know, because they know that they didn't do anything. And that's like a terrible feeling for people, you know, not that I make them feel bad, right? It's always a positive interaction, but you know, it's, you, they know, right? You know, you know how you feel if you're not getting things done. You know? So Jen, anything you want to say? <laughs> no, I thought you covered everything. Um, The only other thing that I like about this is the challenge page. Oh yeah. yeah. I think that part's really awesome. If you want to click on that to show everybody. Yeah. If you, you can make it a game, you know, set challenges for yourself every month or your team. And that way everybody's accountable to each other. Donnie, is this just for teams or can individually? No. Like so this? you could use this, uh, it, uh, you could use it as an individual. Obviously, they charge a little more the more people you add on. It's not super expensive. It's a write-off. But, you know, it's um, it's for individual or team. And it's also for recruiting and, you know, agent producing. You know, mm -hmm. so it has two different uh, platforms that you can select through. So if you want to go through and just do recruiting, and, and again, because why make phone calls for recruiting if you don't know how many phone calls are going to get an agent, right? So you're going to go in there and just do the same thing with recruiting, track your numbers, track everything. Uh, but it's got so much more to, you know, in that, but it's, it's for everything. Hey, Donnie, I have a question. Yeah. It, it kind of looks like it's a white label of go high level. Is that, do you know if it is? I don't no, no. I know in the in the real estate world, there's nothing like this. They're like in a league of their own, but maybe in other industries, if there's there's something pretty similar. Okay. What was the name of that one, by the way? Uh, it's white label. Go high, go high level. Yeah, I'm on my phone, so just the the website looked kind of like it. I I couldn't oh, see okay. any details, but. Yeah, it, it might be similar. I mean, it just it just tracks everything. I did use a different program before this one, but it was uh, uh, Excel based. That's why I wanted web based. But the Excel, mm -hmm. you hit something wrong in one spot, it just like hoops all the numbers out. <laughs> yeah, so this makes it a little bit easier. But but I do have a question um, on here. Who who actually knows their business well enough to articulate your numbers? Who tracks? I don't track um, how many calls I make. Yeah. I just track how many closings I have, mm -hmm. where my numbers lie, but um, not my calls. Yeah. So you don't know how many calls it takes to get to the closing? No. Wouldn't that feel good, Lynn? <laughs> 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 it would feel good to me because it drives me nuts to, to not know. You know what I mean? Because for me, it's like waking up and you're like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I, I, I could do this, but I'm beating my head against the wall. Like, is there, is like, what's the light at the end of the tunnel? It's like, why work out if you're not going to like get in shape with it. Right. Like, but if you know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, it makes it, makes it easier. Yeah, it's, it's progress. It's, you know, something to be looking toward. Mm -hmm. And um, I think progress knowledge is, helping you get the progress. So totally agree with you. The more accurate I am in what I I have going on, the more I know, 
it's always a lot more helpful than just it being vague. Oh, what am I going to do today? Mm -hmm. Right? No, you have a set plan as to what you're going to do each day. And that gets you to where you want to go. Yeah. But seeing it, you know, up in front of you like this is great. Yeah. At least for me, it's got to be, it's got to be visual, you know, or else it just makes me feel better too. It's like, okay, we're, we're, when I'm feeling like, okay, nothing's happening. It's like, I can look at that and go, okay, we, we got stuff going on. And I didn't show on here. There's like a, you know, your pipeline of people too. One of the, my favorite pages is because it shows you um, people that you're going to, you're, you're working with, that you're talking to today that are going to work with you in the future. But if you build out your income and everything, so it's exciting to look at too, because it shows you the potential income that you're going to make, you know, if you keep following up and keep working with these clients. Would you say that Kendall um, follows what you teach more than everyone else does? Um, she probably does it better than other people. Um, she she definitely has attached to it. I, I mean, it's it's a tough thing to do. We don't have any agents at the moment that actually even do 50% of what we're asking for. Um, but, but even the bit that they do, like, you know, she's turning internet leads right now, um, you know, because of, of doing that. So, but she's one of the ones that'll tell you, yeah, I know when I, you know, when I meet with, with Donnie and I don't have my numbers, I know I don't have as much to talk about, but when she, you know, hits her numbers, there was, you remember Francisco, um, you know, he's, he's kind of back to his old job right now, but that dude, when, whenever, cause I was so hard on him at the beginning of the year and he would make the calls every day. It went from no calls to making the calls, track it like it was the numbers were there. He was having the conversations, doing the work, scared out of his mind because, um, you, you know, talking to people is scary for some reason, but he was scary for him. But then he started closing deals, like not his SOI, right? You know, through the leads that he was getting because it's a numbers game, right? That's the thing too is, you know, you got to talk to, you know, if you're generating leads, for example, it's not as, as nice and tight as like an SOI. But it, that's how, you know, it keeps people constantly fresh to talk to, but you're only going to close one to 4% of them, you know, so one to four out of a hundred. That's why I like, that's why it's important for agents that want to prospect, especially um, it's like, you know, if you're going to lead generate, what does that take to close that lead, you know, to get that done? So yeah, so Ken, Kendall does good. Um, everybody could do better. Um, but, you know, that's just where we're at right now. But Jen, that's why I pulled up Jen's. Now, Jen's the example. If you looked at her numbers, um, for the month, our goal is 400 conversations, which is like peak level. Um, you know, you know, I challenge you guys to do 400. It would change your business for sure. Um, else, um, you know, let's see. Like, well, when I see Donnie, it's like you're talking hundreds of calls, right? Yeah. I I see agents making, you know, they get a couple cold leads. Those cold mm -hmm. leads don't turn into anything. So mm -hmm. then they just quit. They're like, oh, you know what? This just isn't working. Mm -hmm. And if they really understood, oh, no, you're going to get one to two out of, a, you know, so many hundred. Yeah. So you can't give up. But that's what you see a lot of is because I, I pay for the boosts and I can get a lot of, you know, cold leads that way. I like to give those away to people in the group. Um, Dawn Bowen's really good with those. Um, but the majority of people I give them to are just like, you know what, this is too hard. Can't do it. Yeah. It's definitely not hard. It's just like, I mean, I think saying it's hard is the hardest part. You know, that's, that's what makes it. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. But like, like if any of you guys like want to be better at prospecting, reach out to Jen. I'm telling you, like she's been doing this her whole adult life and, and it's just a different level. Right. So if she could literally sit and I can't even do what Jen does, she could sit on the phone all day and call people. And have the best conversations, you know, but her mindset is she believes that she could close them. And she also understands what a lot of people, you know, kind of don't. And, and again, it's because people get the wrong message uh, from the wrong people in this business is leads take a while to nurture, you know, they're cold at first, but they're also cold if you don't know how to talk to them, right? You could have a hot lead right now that's like steaming hot, but if you call them and you don't talk to them, right, that's a cold lead, you know? So you never know. That's why you got to keep, you just got to keep calling people. And if, and if, even if it's cold, you know, Jen, what's a cold lead to you? How long are you going to follow up with them for? Forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we close deals like a lot. Of, like when I go through my, I was going through some of our numbers from 19 or 2019, 20 and 21 uh, this morning. And, and a lot of our uh, uh, closed deals were from leads that we generated years before, you know, even people that we have working right now, we, we you know, they, we got their lead in like 2018, you know, we're looking for business today and we're looking for business later, right? That's how this business should be. If we treat it like it supposed to like a sales business, which it is, you know, we're, we're trying, we're always just trying to generate people today and, and generate people down the road, you know, and then being willing to do what it takes with the nurturing and the follow-up. Um, Cause that's, that's the part that people want to, that's what people call hard. 
you know, but again, I think people either have not had a job before or they need to go get a job. And so they can remember what it's like to actually be on the phones or working all day long. Um, so that way they can go, okay, well, I guess I could do 45 minutes a day, you know? So I think our industry's forgotten like what some of the work is required, you know? And I know I sound maybe like a dick saying that, but <laughs> it's just what it is, you know? Like we got to get back on the phone. We got to be talking to people. And all I hear is people trying to avoid that, you know, and, and could, could hey, Donnie and Jen, um, this was awesome that you guys actually volunteered to share this with everybody. It sounds like we might have to talk about having you do an actual training <laughs> on lead generation and follow up. Um, right now, we're getting short on time, so we, we're going to move forward. Uh, thanks again, guys. This is really yeah, good. Course. Know your numbers. Uh, know your return on those numbers and uh, have a predictable business. I love all that. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. And I agree with Jeff that we need to have a separate training on have you guys come in and do a separate training for us because you have so much insight and so much value to yeah. add. Um, well, I watched um, Jeff build his business off stuff like this. This mm -hmm. is exactly why we have the business we have right now is because he tracked everything. And I, was he was, say, I could see Jeff being like an Uber tracker. Like, 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 it's like your personality seems like it would attach to this. <laughs> He totally did. And that's why we have what we have now is because of what he just, you know, and because it was just like you said, Donnie, like we weren't going to make our mortgage. Mm -hmm. Like we, we weren't going to make our mortgage payment if he didn't have sales. I remember we had one sale that was on, that was coming through and the people decided they wanted to go with another agent because a relative needed the cash. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was, it was a really frightening time. And so you get up, you do what you have to. And I watched him do that. And I'm, I'm so grateful, but it falls along with exactly what you're saying. Just stop here. Hey, Kim, is Kim, Kim, yeah. Kim um, I think you can steal the screen share or yeah. does Donnie have to stop his yeah, screen? Kim closes it out. Yeah, okay. Kim's gonna take our last thoughts here. Yeah, this got in my way. Hold on a second. I can't reach my oh. stuff. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Who am I? I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper and your heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half of the things I do, you might as well turn over to me, and I will do them quickly and correctly. I am easily managed. You must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done, and after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. <clears throat> I am the servant of great people and, alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made failures. I am not a machine, though I work with the precision of a machine, plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the world at your feet. Be easy on me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? <laughs> Dang. I am habit. habit. So it goes right with what he was just saying. I mean, Donnie's, this is it right here. Uh, what's your habits? What are you doing? Is it getting you closer to the money or are you doing the fake work? So um, your habits are so, so important. So I just wanted to share that as, you know, this isn't the time of year that we're thinking about setting goals and starting new habits. But why, why not? This is the perfect time to do it. This is when everybody else is going, oh, it's all holidays and they're sitting on their hands. They're not doing anything. So it, it's our opportunity to pick it, pick up and start making our 20 calls a day. Start doing what needs to happen, you know? Love Sorry. that. Um, do you have any kind of like call to action for the next week? Because um, what we'll do is we'll focus on this for the week and then um, come next Monday, we'll have you start us off and kind of recap. Is there anything that you want any us to focus on specifically? Yeah, I think that this will go with what Donnie's saying. Start tracking. What are you guys doing? What are your habits? 
Um, and it's kind of funny. I read a, uh, an article um, years ago that talked about what our habits are. And one of the things that they said is your mind doesn't want to think. And I'm like, what? My mind doesn't want to think. No, it doesn't. It doesn't want to have to think about what you're going to do today. It wants just to go through a routine. Okay, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do my 20 calls. Then I'm going to do you know, this and that. So your brain doesn't want to think about stuff, people. It wants to just go in a routine. And if you're in a routine, then you don't have to think about it. You, you just do it. Your brain will take over. It will be that success. It will make you great. So my suggestion to you is set up a timeline, block out an hour or 45 minutes, whatever, and, and make those calls, you know? So that's what I would say to do. Make it some you know, track yourself. What are you doing? Awesome. Thank you so much. I love that. It doesn't have to be just phone calls and stuff. It habits of just even um, uh, keeping yourself accountable to your time blocks, right? Whatever that might be. It might be prospecting, which Donnie kind of scolded me a little bit this morning. Not intentionally, Donnie, <laughs> but I had given him the wrong time for our team meeting. Um, and when I told him the right time, he's like, why so late? That's what you're supposed to be doing your, your prospecting, man. We changed our team meeting to 8 a.m. so we can get about our day. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh uh, that was awesome though but yeah I, I get it though I forgot the exp things at night so you're good you're good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, but for me, you're taking that time. And if it's making it at eight o'clock, it's seven o'clock for me. <laughs> so Set that's your really alarm, Kathy. I it, I said it, but I kind of reset again. <laughs> okay, so we'll track our habits this week. Yes, track habits. I Talk love about it. Next week. Okay, guys, we went a little bit over, so we're going to cut you loose, um, let you get about your day. Um, I love you all. I'll reach out if we can do anything for you. This was really great. Donnie and Jen, thanks for jumping on. I uh, love the value that you shared with us. Kim, your contribution, and James, and what you guys prepared for us. That was that was awesome stuff. So, um, yeah, get about it, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We're Hopefully, we'll see you all on Wednesday. Uh, for pitch 59 training it's good it, it really is a great tool for you to connect with um, all the people in your in your life that are business owners or I mean your other agents uh, 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 adding value to other people so yeah I'm looking forward to that one do you want to move, keep going with agent attraction for anybody that wants to stay on um yeah we can take a few minutes if anybody wants to stay on we'll take some time for agent attraction um I'm attracting all. Your tons <laughs> out. <laughs> so we'll just start off with our recognition again. We've got our builders, Donnie and Jen, and Heidi, and then our leaders, Jeff and Lynn, and Eric and Michelle. And again, the goal is to see more names up on this list. So I'm excited. I'm excited for it to happen because I know we're all working towards it. Okay, see you on that. Reminder for Cabo. Yeah, Cabo's coming up in March. Um, I was talking to Nathan a little bit before team meeting started. Uh, he's making arrangements to try and get there, so that's exciting. Um, he sent a picture of the uh, Lynn and I on the uh, teaser trailer video from one of the previous ones, so that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. If you're looking at building um, an EXP organization, participating in Rev Share and stuff, this is the annual event to try and get to and the people you'll meet um and, and um the relationships that you'll create are, are amazing awesome and um eric he he's shown property so he couldn't hop on today but um how did everyone do with their goals that they had from last week should we just go through again like we we did um, this, anybody that wants to share we can go over this uh, if anybody has anything that they want to share i'm just going to say for one with the holiday and uh, my mom had surgery and getting her relocated into a rehab center and stuff like that um i didn't do shit so there it is <laughs> <laughs> so i did good on my goals um i did not do anything on thanksgiving so um, I did extra on Saturday to make up for that missed day. So nice. Good job. So I set my uh, event for uh, March 15th. 
Nice. And then a time block to make time to call agents to invite them. Nice. Your ven your venue's booked and you're rolling forward. What are the yep. next steps, Nate? Sorry. Uh, the next steps, I need to um, make a uh, an event right and uh, invite get start inviting agents to come to it and uh, okay. RSVP so I know how many is going to come. I don't know. I was thinking about actually charging a $25 ticket for them to come and then reimburse them when they came. Mm. But if they don't come, they don't get the money back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I thought because some people, if they're willing to pay for it, they're going to come. And if they're going to get the money back, then, you know, it doesn't cost them anything. Yeah, I think people that make an investment definitely follow through more. So I'm going to do uh, more tracking with what I'm doing. Like I kind of wrote down uh, who, where I located people, but I didn't write down the names or anything. I just said, okay, I called. 10 people um, from Facebook or, and I reached out to this many people on Instagram and I, and I put like where I, how many and where, but I didn't put down like their names and who I con that way, if I have their names in there, I can track better and follow up better. So yeah. So I'm going to do some tracking. Can I throw a suggestion in there for you? Sure. Something that I've been doing that's been helping me a whole bunch with different segments of my business is uh, if you use Google at all, you can go into like your Google Sheets and then um, on the the uh, left top tab, there's a you can choose what kind you want to use and you can drop down and you can use forms and build yourself a form for you to use with their what it is for, what it's about. Um, their name, contact information, all that stuff, questions you asked them or going to ask them. And then you can uh, go into the settings uh, and create an Excel spreadsheet automatically that attaches to that form. So every time you're talking to somebody, you can open that form up, fill it out as you're talking to them. And when, it, when you hit submit, it automatically strings that all that information into a, a Google, um, kind of like an Excel sheet. It's a Google sheet. And that's been helping me track and keep keep the names and all the information together on certain parts of my business I'm talking to people. Awesome. I love it. Thanks. Can you do multiple forms and choose which Excel sheet it's going to go to? Yep. You, know, okay. you can, you can uh, make different ones for different aspects of your business. And then uh, you can tie it to whatever sheet you want, or you can just self-generate a sheet for specifically that one. Okay, cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was very, very helpful. Oh, of course. Anybody else? I thought James had something to say. Oh, did he? James. I cut him off oh. before. Oh, I... I didn't have anything to say, but one thing that I have written down, Shane and I are going to meet after this, is that I think we're going to look back on uh, like this past year and just look at the agents we've interacted with and done deals with and probably just write them a handwritten message and then kind of keep track of that, just see how they're doing and kind of establish relationship or reestablish that way. I love that you already started the relationship and it kind of goes with what Donnie was talking about too, right? It's a, it's a nurture. It's, it, it's a long play and following up with those people and staying top of mind and building the relationship. It doesn't happen overnight and their situation may change down the road. Um, I know I, I'm going to work on improving on that as well. Um, so it ties right in with following up with uh, cold leads and making them a warm lead and then make, you know, form a relationship with them. You already have a relationship with the agent. So yeah, I love that. I throw one more thing into that what I said about the Google uh, forms. I put the link to that form in the time block for what it's made for. So I always know where the link is. So when I begin that time block, 
Um, like uh, I have a, a one for talking to uh, referral partners, building business partners. Uh, just go in there, click on that scheduled time block, and there's the link for that particular form. So I can track who I talk to because it time stamps it, who, when, um, what it's about. It's all in that that uh, link. It just opens up and I can use it. Thank you. Sorry. Super smart. Mm -hmm. like that. Shana, did you have anything to add to what Jane said? Or did you want, want to follow up on any of your goals? Um, so I was... I'm still working on bundle select to, to kind of go with what James was talking about. I did just reach out to um, Kristen Wetzel. I'm going to talk to her um, to try to brainstorm and get some ideas too with um, it, it goes along with agent attraction, but also just like the agents that I mentor. Um, and, and in general, I just feel like uh, I think, Donnie and Jen said it too, that like the production level is just of like trying to get other agents to do things They're, I find that they're not as motivated as I am. And, and so like, I'm kind of wanting to, I need to see it differently and see what, how I can better serve them. Um, and, and what it is that, well, okay. So then there's another aspect of it, of like, what aligns with my goals and like what it is that I'm wanting to accomplish. And so like trying to figure out what that is instead of being frustrated is, is kind of what I'm working on. So I don't know if that makes sense or if that was too vague, but <laughs> I am working on something and just wanting to take, put more in alignment of what it is that I'm wanting to accomplish in my business and then also align it with the agent attraction and that I'm shifting it to more of attracting the people that align with me rather than me trying to just get a bunch of agents, if that makes sense. Totally makes sense. It's more attraction. You want to work with people that are like you and um, defining that as step one, right? Love that. Lynn, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Sorry about that. You're good. No, I really don't have anything that I, I want to say. I'm just going, not feeling so good today. So my mind is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. Didn't sleep well. Um, but anyway, no, I'm still on my goals. I'm still working on those. Um, I have been working mostly on, um, on catching up some things now that things are a little slower for me on the book side. So that's where a lot of my um, my efforts are and trying to figure out how to get my seller's property sold. Um, that's kind of where my mind is right now. All right, I like it. Um, for me, I did not reach out to two new agents. I continue to reach out to the agents that I've been working on, um, but I have been doing a lot of new connections with speakers and sponsors. Um, that's something that I've added in as a time block. Um, and those are for our Wednesday trainings. So just making sure that we're getting people booked out and that we're making new connections. So we have kind of like a revolving door of just, you know, speakers and sponsors. And so that's been really good because um, I think that's part of our age mm -hmm. attraction is having people. Um, well, you're doing a great job because I think we are booking in March now. Yeah. For our Wednesday trainings. Um, I did want to also ask um, Jen or Summer, I see that you're on here. Do you guys have any um, agent attraction goals or anything that you would like to put out there? Not really agent attraction. We're just mostly focusing really hardcore on production. That's our main focus this year. I love it. Nice. And I feel like, too, um, as you focus more on your production and your growth as a team, that you will attract more people just naturally. Absolutely. What else did Eric say you want to talk about? Just a reminder to invite to the trainings and the yeah. um the overview coming up. It's a good reach out. A... I mean, could we make it a goal that we all at least get one person to the overview? I think that that's fair. <laughs> Those that are looking at building, yeah. yeah. That's why we're doing them. 
that's going to not this week, but the net the following Wednesday will be our EXP overview. That'd be a great goal. I'm going to put it down on mine if anybody else wants to. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'll put it down, but um, I'm going to have very limited time, so I'm going to have to really push for that. Awesome. Um, I think I have a quote to end on, and then we'll let everybody get around their days. Get, get, around, get their around their days. Get on with their day. Um, on good teams, coaches hold players accountable. On great teams, players hold players accountable. I just want to throw that out there because I feel like what we're doing, getting on here, talking to each other, um, we can hold each other accountable. And just keep pushing each other. That's great. I appreciate you all. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Good, good seeing you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great week, you guys. Have a good week. Thanks.